LiDAR is, is a fool's errand. And, any, and anyone relying on LiDAR is doomed. Expensive sensors that are, are unnecessary. It's like having a whole bunch of expensive appendices. Like one appendix is bad, well, now they want to put a whole bunch of them. That's ridiculous. What are your <laughs> thoughts on his provocative statement that LiDAR is a crutch? See, sometimes he'll say dumb things like the driver monitoring thing, but sometimes he'll say absolutely, completely, 100% obviously true things. Yeah. Of course, LiDAR is a crutch. It's not even a good crutch. <laughs> You're not even using it. Oh, they're using it for localization. Yeah. Which isn't good in the first place. If you have to localize your car to centimeters in order to drive, like, yeah, they're that's not, not driving. What are your thoughts on the uh, Elon Musk provocative statement that LiDAR is a crutch? that uh is a kind of um i guess growing pains yeah. and that much of the perception task can be done with cameras so i think it is undeniable that people walk around without you know lasers in their foreheads uh, and they can get into vehicles and drive them and and so there's an existence proof that you can drive using you know passive vision no doubt can't argue with that in terms of sensors yeah so yeah there's proof in terms that... of sensors right so like there's there's an example that you know we all go do it uh, many of us every day in terms of uh lidar being a crutch sure but <laughs> but you know in the same way that uh you know the combustion engine was a crutch on the path to an electric vehicle in the same way that you know any technology ultimately gets replaced by some superior technology in the future. Elon Musk is confident that large-scale data and deep learning can solve the autonomous driving problem. What are your thoughts on the limits, possibilities of deep learning in this space? Well, it's, it's obviously part of the solution. I mean, I don't think we'll ever have a self-driving system, or at least not in the foreseeable future, that does not use deep learning, you know, you put it this way. So in the history of sort of engineering, particularly sort of sort of AI-like systems. There's uh, generally a first phase where everything is built by hand, then there is a second phase, and that was the case for autonomous driving, you know, 20, 30 years ago. There's a phase where there's a little bit of learning is used, but there's a lot of engineering that's involved in kind of, you know, taking care of corner cases and, and putting limits, uh, et cetera, because the learning system is not perfect. And then as technology progresses, we end up relying more and more on learning. That's the history of character recognition, it's the history of speech recognition, now computer vision, natural language processing. And I think the same is going to happen with, uh, with autonomous driving, that currently the, the, uh, the methods that are closest to providing some level of autonomy, some you know, decent level of autonomy, where you don't expect a driver to kind of do anything, is where you constrain the world so you only run within, you know, 100 square kilometers or square miles in Phoenix, but the weather is nice and the roads are wide, which is what Waymo is doing. You completely over-engineer the car with tons of LiDARs and sophisticated sensors that are too expensive for consumer cars, but they're fine if you just run a fleet. And you engineer the thing, uh, the hell out of the everything else. You you map the entire world, so you have a complete 3D model of everything. So the only thing that the perception system has to take care of is moving objects and 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 construction and sort of you know things that that weren't in your map. And you can engineer a good you know slam system and all that stuff, right? Mm -hmm. So so that's kind of the current approach that's closest to some level of autonomy. But I think eventually the long term solution is going to rely more and more on learning and possibly using a combination of self-supervised learning and model-based reinforcement or something like that. Elon Musk famously said that uh, LiDAR is a crutch that really in camera in the long term, camera only is the right solution, which echoes some of the ideas you're expressing. Of course, the domain in terms of its safety criticality is different. But what do you think about that approach in uh, the autonomous vehicle space. And in general, do you see a connection between the incredible real world challenges you have to solve in the home with Roomba? And I saw a demonstration of some of them, corner cases, literally, and uh, autonomous vehicles. So there's absolutely a tremendous overlap between both the problems 
you know, a robot vacuum and an autonomous vehicle are trying to solve and the tools and the types of sensors that are being applied uh, in the pursuit of the solutions. In my world, my environment is actually much harder than the environment in automobile travels. We don't have roads. We have t-shirts. We have steps. We have a near infinite number of, of patterns and colors and, and surface textures on the floor. Especially from a visual perspective. So yeah, the way visually the world it, looks it's really tough. Is un, un, infinitely uh, variable. On the other hand, safety is way easier on the inside. My, my robots, they're not very heavy. They're not very fast. If they bump into your foot, you think it's funny. And... Uh, you know, and and um, uh, autonomous vehicles kind of have the inverse problem. Right. And so that for me saying vision is the future, I can say that without reservation. For autonomous vehicles, I think I believe what Elon's saying about the future is ultimately going to be vision. Maybe if we put a cheap lighter on there as a backup sensor, it might not be the worst idea in the world. So the stakes um, are much higher. The stakes so are much higher. You have to be much more careful thinking through how far away that feature is. Right. Right. And but I think that the primary environmental understanding sensor is going to be a visual system. Um, I could share a little bit. Um, I'm not on the uh, on the labeling. Uh, well, I, I'm, I am on the labeling, but it's different. Um, it's not because they're using LIDAR and radar. So it kind of does all that pickup for you. So however, what's um, like Elon said, um, LIDAR, I'm already starting to see that LIDAR and radar um, have uh, issues in picking up stuff. So that's why, but they still use camera. So uh, it's similar to what I was doing, um, but could you talk about uh, what do you mean by LiDAR and uh, has issues picking things up? Um, so with with LiDAR and radar hitting like so because it, it's like a it's like a sensor. It's like a light sensor that hits objects and then picks up the shape of that object. Right. Um, so uh, when it does that, there's there's interference around. If there's interference around, you have a broken image. But if you have a camera that picks up the image, you, you see the actual camera and then you can write over the right over the picture. But when there's LiDAR and radar hitting a picture, uh, hitting an object, but there's interference around, like, you know, other cars or other satellites or other, you know, things that it's hitting through, that that can be a broken image, um, which is why it's not dependable. Um, however, however, because of the amount of sensors, radar sensors and LiDAR sensors oh, has on their cars, that, that uh, becomes uh, much better. In terms of uh, picking up a broken image, it's very it's it it's it's not that frequent because of the amount of sensors and lidars they have. So they have like a full three hundred and sixty protection on the car. You, you've probably seen those vans um, driving around. I, when I sat in one, I was blown away of the the stuff that it was seeing. Um, it was just crazy. Um, it was everything playing everything in real time um, and seeing all that. Um, and uh, the cameras just mapped this entire car and entire road around it. Um, was just insane the big device on top do you think that's going to be something that's minimized a lot more in the future because it's kind of <laughs> ugly yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah that's uh yeah no it's very ugly um yeah. it's very I think, that's i think that's going to be one of the challenges um that's one of the challenges of minimizing lidar and radar um if you i don't think we have that right technology yet to be able to compact that thing so much the more you compact it the more things you have to take out of it so it's it's not going to perform well, the same way. So it's not going to happen soon. No, definitely not. Well, but Taco Bell does have full self-driving cars on the road right now, permitted for them to drive. Um, but because they're not building at mass, um, they're they're allowed to do that. And um, and it's, to be honest, it's scary, but it, it performs it performs good. Uh, it, it 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 can get around from a point A to a point B. From most scenarios, is there a backup uh, driver in the vehicle, or is it completely? There has to be a backup driver in the vehicle. Okay. Um, uh, so there's a backup driver in the vehicle um, for testing, and then they're providing rides. I I don't know what other uh, state they're actually 
uh, permitted to provide rides for employees. Phoenix, um, yeah. Yeah, Phoenix, yeah. Um, so they're 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 working on it, but I think they're a lot further back than Tesla. Uh, 